Hello, and welcome to this Nursing World Shared Practice Forum. My name is Dr. Laura Wood, and I'm the Senior Vice President of Patient Care Operations and the Chief Nursing Officer at Boston Children's Hospital. Today, I'm truly pleased to welcome Dr. Louise Jakubik. Dr. Jakubik is the Chief Executive and Learning Officer of Nurse Builders and the founder of its Nurse Mentoring Institute, which is dedicated to furthering state-of-the-art, evidence-based mentoring practice for individuals and organizations. Additionally, she's the Chief Executive Officer of Innovative Mentoring Solutions, a software company that produces proprietary mentoring solutions software for hospitals to support mentoring programming within a mentoring culture, and is the recipient of the prestigious American Organization of Nurse Executives, AONE, Nurse Mentor Award for serving as a nurse in executive practice who has been exemplary in supporting the professional development of his or her colleagues by serving as a mentor. Dr. Jakubik, welcome. Thank you so much, Laura. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. Thank you. It's great to have you as well. Um, let's begin by having you tell us how you became interested in studying the science of mentoring. Certainly. My interest in mentoring originated from my, and really an intersection of my deep uh, want to quantify mentoring and its outcomes, and also an experience I had had um, as a professional uh, being developed uh, in a mentor-mentee relationship. Would you please share a brief overview of mentorship and describe a bit more about the difference between mentoring precepting and coaching, because there are three distinct areas. Yes, I'd be glad to. And what's really interesting, Laura, is that when you think about these, you know, mentoring, uh, precepting, and coaching, these definitions are frequently uh, misunderstood and interchanged. Um, and so it's, it, I think it's very helpful, uh, we as leaders who want to move mentoring culture into our work environments, um, to really start with being clear about what these definitions are. And so when you think about mentoring, mentoring is a career developmental relationship um, that's been championed uh, by business, business and the service professions. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, it's about development of knowledge, development of competence, uh, and uh, career success. It's typically seen as a, as a long-term relationship um, that is often described by individuals who engage in it as transformational. Mm -hmm. When you look at precepting, um, and again, in, in healthcare, goodness, we spend so much time uh, and resources um, in, the, in the orientation and, and preceptor realm. That is a really a, a role that's focused on um, job knowledge and skill development with an outcome goal of having a competent, uh, safe uh, provider uh, of, of healthcare at the end of that experience. And so what makes precepting very different from a mentoring relationship is it's short term. Mm -hmm. Often preceptors are assigned, so often it isn't a choice, where mentoring is, is a choice. It's short term, and um, again, it's much more transactional um, in terms of its purpose. Coaching. Now, what's interesting about coaching, and it's always I always like to make this uh, uh, connection for people, is that mentors can serve as coaches, mm -hmm. but not every coach is a mentor, of course. Mm -hmm. When we think about coaching, I always want to make the the clarity, the difference that coaching is a discrete task. It's focused on a particular skill or a particular outcome. So, for instance, you may have a nurse who wants to improve their uh, their ability to communicate, or they may want to do their first poster presentation at a national conference. Mm -hmm. It's a discrete um, skill or task that someone works with you to develop um, your competencies around. And so typically a coaching relationship is more short term. It's more, it's more transactional. However, a mentor at times may, may work in that coaching role. Those are great distinctions and really helpful. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I want to just transition to talk a little bit about the fact that you recognize mentorship was an essential element of career development. And you also noted that there was a void to be filled in nursing. Could you talk a little bit more about that aspect of the work? That's right. Um, as I mentioned at the outset of our conversation, I had experienced the power of mentoring, and I'd witnessed that power in others. Um, however, I noticed that while business had traditionally leveraged mentoring as an organizational force, the social sciences, healthcare, wasn't really doing that at all. Um, and frankly, I saw that as an opportunity. So when I began my program of research, I was really drawn to 
the business model, which was a triad model, mm -hmm. um, looking at uh, the mentor, the mentee, and the organization. Um, and so I was really interested in the fact that business had operationalized it from that perspective, whereas um, nursing and the social sciences had really always seen mentoring as a dyad relationship mm -hmm. between a mentor and a mentee. And what's important about uh, that void at the time um, is that viewing mentoring as a dyad relationship only between a mentor and a mentee doesn't leave room for the organizational outcomes. And I saw that as the big void um, in mentoring and nursing back in 2005 and 2006, and hence the journey um, to begin to move the science forward and to begin to move the no needle towards this, this triad relationship um, and this outcomes perspective really began. So with that in mind, to fill the void, can you describe how you went about studying the concept of mentorship as a, as a next logical step? Yes. As I mentioned, um, I, I was really interested in understanding how has business leveraged this outcomes perspective so well, while nursing and the social sciences really hadn't done that. Um, and so I really delved into the literature related to mentoring and the business model. Um, and what I found uh, was this uh, this triad model, um, which I've, I've adopted called um, the Mutual Benefits Model by, by Zay. It's a theoretical uh, framework um, that, uh, again, Zay's, just to give you a little bit of background, um, Zay's work, uh, he interviewed leaders in Fortune 500 companies um, related to this concept of mentoring to understand it, to understand the components, um, and to, to really conceptualize it. Um, and in this, this mutual benefits model of the mentor, the mentee, um, and the organization, he quantified these four levels, knowledge, uh, personal growth, protection, and career advancement. Um, and so in my work, I, again, adopted that model and applied it um, to mentoring. And so sort of the first step um, in this outcomes approach um, was to develop an instrument, which at the initial, uh, in the beginning, at the outset, was called the Jakubic Mentoring Benefits Questionnaire. Um, it's, it's, it's since been renamed into the Mentoring Benefits Instrument, um, which I'll talk uh, more about a little bit later. Um, I developed the instrument. It was initially a 57-item instrument, performed the validity, uh, the reliability testing, um, and then used it in my dissertation research in 2007 and in multiple studies uh, beyond that. So my first step um, to answer your question was really to be able to apply this model from business, from the research that existed, um, to, uh, to mentoring, develop an instrument, and then test it. So what did you find? Well, interesting. Uh, my, my first study uh, this is really a researcher's dream, wound up generating a lot more data um, than I needed, which was a good thing, uh, because what it allowed me to do pretty early on in the research journey uh, was to perform factor analysis. And for those people who aren't necessarily uh, research wonks, factor analysis is all about um, generating the subscales within a particular instrument. Mm -hmm. So in running factor analysis, what I found was that the four original theoretical subscales in Zay's model did hold up in, in nursing. So out of that uh, factor analysis, we had knowledge, personal growth, protection, and career advancement, which were four original theoretical subscales from Zay. But in addition, there were two additional subscales. Mm -hmm. um, and those subscales were belonging um, and career optimism. So it was pretty exciting to me uh, to see that not only was I able to apply a, busy, a business mentoring model, um, which was steeped in research, to at nurse mentoring um, and test it, but that out of that came these two additional subscales, um, which to me uh, made a lot of sense. You know, I sort of said, aha, you know, this, this is what factor analysis is telling me, but these subscales, they make sense. So this formed the basis uh, for being able to study mentoring in some unique ways in, in nursing. Um, it really formed the basis for um, creating uh, sort of a foundation to be able to, to study uh, mentoring and nursing using a triad model, um, but also one that was unique particularly to nursing. Um, and it really formed the basis for what would become a, a nurse mentoring model uh, later on. So how did you progress from that point in time in your thinking about the model development to actually create the Jakubic mentoring model? Sure. Um, again, uh, when we think about sort of my, my journey and my, and my purpose, um, my goal was to 
create this outcomes perspective. Um, I, and again, if we think about as a researcher, what was my end goal? What was my end game uh, in, in this in this whole process? I really want to drive mentoring into the workplace, into healthcare. Mm -hmm. And I knew that to be able to do that, we need to be able to, to quantify it, to measure it. And then we also needed to also understand the predictors of it. Um, and so initially, um, I looked at what were the predictors of mentoring benefits. So I now had this outcome scale, this mentoring benefits inventory, which it later uh, was re renamed as. Um, and I started to look at what are some predictor variables. So I looked at things like I looked at quality of mentoring. I looked at quantity of mentoring, how much. Um, I looked at um, type, formal versus informal. Mm -hmm. um, and in every single study, um, in that initial study mm -hmm. um, in 2007, and then in every study through 2011, 2012, in every single study, um, in the multiple regression analysis, which is a, uh, it's a, it's a, a statistical test that looks at, at overlap, statistical overlap, in every single analysis, quality was the single biggest predictor of mentoring benefits, overshadowing quantity, overshadowing um, type. And what that means is that it didn't matter if we looked at, at formality, it did, at formal versus informal. It didn't matter if we looked at the type um, or, or, the, or the amount. Uh, quality was the only predictor that, that really um, bore any fruit um, in terms of it. So um, to make a long story short, in 2011 into 2012, um, I was really a frustrated researcher because in every study we did, while it was exciting that we had these mentoring benefits, mm -hmm. um, I felt that if you really think about it, mentoring quality, how do we drive quality? I mean, we can think of some ways, but qu the fact that a quality relationship would drive benefits mm -hmm. is sort of, you know, elementary. It makes sense. It, it's It's... Uh, it wasn't really it wasn't something that I felt would would move the needle in terms of driving mentoring benefits into the workplace. Um, and so I, I looked around at my fellow research colleagues and I said, we've got to do something to to quantify another predictive predictor factor um, that will let us look at outcomes. Um, and so along came the mentoring practices inventory and uh, developed an instrument, which is called the mentoring practices inventory, uh, which is a 36 item instrument. Did the, obviously the validity and the reliability testing um, on that, and then did multiple studies to be able to look at, do mentoring practices drive mentoring benefits? Um, and in every study that we've done since that time, since 2012, uh, we've We've shown that mentoring practices um, do predict uh, mentoring benefits. So the, what does that mean, like in a nutshell? Uh, mentoring practices are quantifiable, uh, so they're measurable, they're teachable. Mm -hmm. And those are the components that we can teach mentors, we can teach uh, leaders, those who support mentors, mm -hmm. um, to drive mentoring um, into the workplace. So, boy, that's quite a – that's a decade journey to really evolve it, it that far. So – what did the subsequent studies ultimately uh, reveal? Well, if we look at the studies from 2012 and to the present, in every study, mentoring practices predicted mentoring benefits. And I will tell you, uh, my, my research colleagues and I uh, on the, the research team were just thrilled that we could identify um, a predictor that we felt was really meaningful um, that would predict uh, mentoring benefits. Um, but so we did multiple, we, we did an intervention study with multiple studies that went on between 2012 moving forward. Uh, but something interesting happened long about 2013. Uh, we were doing a multi-site um, intervention study uh, where we were looking at mentoring practices as we'd done in some other studies. Um, and right before we started the study, we asked ourselves the question, would it be interesting to bring mentoring quality back? So we had looked at quality and all these other predictors for, from 2007 to 2011. Yeah. Quality was the single biggest predictor again and again. Uh, then we've discovered mentoring practices, and all of a sudden they are, you know, this, this grand predictor of mentoring benefits, really exciting. Um, and we said to ourselves as a research team, what if we looked at the two together in a study? And something really interesting happened. When we looked at linear regression, uh, multiple uh, and, the, and multiple regression in the in the linear regression, uh, when we looked at mentoring practices, they predicted fifty percent of um, the variance in in mentoring benefits. Uh, when we looked at um, quality, 
of that 50% combined quality and, and mentoring uh, practices, quality only only consisted of 5% of that, of that uh, predictive ability, whereas the remainder of that 50% prediction was attributable to mentoring practices. And so what that said to us in this in the study is, goodness, not only do mentoring practices predict mentoring benefits, but they have a much more important predictive ability um, in terms of predicting the outcome. So this was really exciting for us. So that's a significant body of research work that you completed. How would you summarize the impact for healthcare today? I think the major outcome is when I started this this journey um, at the beginning of a 10-year research agenda, the goal was to move the needle from descriptive studies, characteristics of mentors, really a, more of a soft skill mm -hmm. approach to mentoring, to move it to really an outcomes approach. Mm -hmm. And so at this point, um, you know, I stand here today with a, a mentoring model that has you know, statistically confirmed mentoring practices that predict mentoring benefits. Um, and what that means for leaders like yourself is that you have the tools, um, you have the model um, that the tools that are teachable, um, that are measurable, to really be able to take those tools and drive mentoring um, into the workplace. Uh, I think it's really important as we move forward and we think about what this does mean. Um, one of the things we started out talking about today was definitions. Mm -hmm. um, to approach mentoring from the perspective of what does the science say? Um, so from an, from an evidence-based perspective uh, and an outcomes one at that. Um, and I think those are uh, the, the most meaningful contributions of this decade of research uh, for me. We'd like to stop now and ask our viewers a question. And in your response, please leave your city and country location. And specifically, this question arose because so much attention in nursing and in really healthcare has been focused on how to support people who are immediately in their first year of transition to practice. And what we're realizing is the opportunities are so much larger. So we're really interested in learning uh, from our open pediatrics community. What opportunities does your organization have to address the professional development of nurses over a multi-decade career trajectory? So it must be a great feeling to now have this valid and reliable instrument and to have a view of how you've really shaped outcomes to approach mentoring and nursing. Um, with that in mind, I wanted to ask you what you're thinking about doing next. What are the next steps? Certainly. Well, as as you can probably relate, um, you achieve this big, you know, this big agenda, this big goal, and yep. you get to the end of it and think, oh, there's so much work to do. <laughs> so as as much as I think we've moved uh, forward, there certainly is just a lot of of, of work moving forward. Um, as I mentioned uh, earlier, uh, my goal really is to to move from. Uh, from a from from a non outcomes perspective, to really looking at how do we use the science, how do we use the evidence um, to drive mentoring um, into the healthcare environment. Um, currently, uh, we have a, a a list of research priorities, as you might imagine. Um, we're currently conducting a multi site uh, study where we're evaluating the effectiveness of a cloud based mentoring program uh, platform on both individual and organizational outcomes. Um, we plan to in early 2020, uh, begin a study looking at knowledge and skills gains um, from a mentoring educational intervention. Um, and so that will be um, a study that um, will give us some information from a knowledge perspective in terms of how do we um, equip mentors um, and mentees uh, for the skills and knowledge that they need um, to be successful in their roles. Um, we're very interested, as I talk with your team this morning about um, about looking at interprofessionals in the context of mentoring. Mm -hmm. um, as you and I have talked about many times, um, while this first decade of research was done among nurses, mm -hmm. the outcomes from it um, are really, uh, they're broad, um, and they don't really speak um, to nurses in particular at all. Uh, that's, again, where the, the data comes from. Uh, but in the next couple of years, 
uh, we really want to begin to to do some studies looking at interprofessionals. Um, and one of the first studies I'm really very interested in doing is uh, to replicate, to test the model. Uh, again, this started with a business model being tested in nursing. Um, and so I, I think the logical next step is to take the nursing mentoring model, um, which again, I don't think is a nurse mentoring model at all, and test it among um, interprofessionals, uh, again, outside of, of nursing uh, proper. Um, lastly, uh, again, we're working on a framework, uh, a mentor, exemplary mentoring practice framework, um, a book, uh, a couple of manuscripts. We've got one that's ready to go, one that's in process. Um, and we're really excited uh, to be officially announcing in, in 20, latter 2020, early 2021, but it's in process, um, an interprofessional uh, mentoring certification. Um, and I, I just would summarize uh, this big, long list I've just shared with you um, by saying that um, for me, um, even though our conversation today is about science and about a research agenda, for me, the fun of all of this is in making a difference in healthcare and helping leaders like yourself to really uh, drive mentoring into the workplace and change people's lives. And as we say um, in the Mentoring Institute, change the world uh, through mentoring. That's the fun part to me. Mm -hmm. Well, I share that vision, and I thank you so much, Louise, for for the work you've done, for sharing your research, and um, you know, for really helping us think about these practices and principles. I wanted to also just sort of shift the focus a little bit now and ask you why you think mentoring was not embraced in nursing previously. So it's today it's sort of not controversial. People believe in it and think it's a good idea, but it wasn't always that way. Could you talk a little bit about that as well? Well, as we again, as we discussed earlier, unfortunately, nursing hasn't historically seen mentoring um, as a, a hard outcomes-based skill. It's been more of a soft skill, mm -hmm. um, and as a result, it hasn't been prioritized in nursing. Mm -hmm. Whereas business has really viewed mentoring as an organizational outcomes force, and it's really leveraged its outcome. Um, so, why now is is mentoring important for nurses? Mm -hmm. um, it, it's really important for nurses at all stages of their career beyond orientation and residency um, to be able to seek out their fullness um, in terms of uh, professional growth. It's always important for, for me to convey to nurses that, to, uh, that understanding that mentoring is about growth horizontally, mm -hmm. vertically. It may be about growing in place. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really an opportunity to identify and grow your own human capacity, mm -hmm. your own your knowledge, your skills, your competence, um, your your abilities, and again, though that growth through the fuel of the mentoring relationship may be one that occurs in place within a role where you don't change roles, and it may mm -hmm. be one that actually uh, carries you to advanced roles, mm -hmm. uh, and that's I think the the beauty of mentoring, but also really important in terms of clarity, that nurses understand mentoring is something you can use no matter where you are in your career journey mm -hmm. and no matter uh, what it is that you wish uh, in terms of your of your career journey. Um, and I think that's really important. I think we as, as leaders are embracing that. We understand uh, the value of our human talent. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we're uh, in a really exciting time now where as, as healthcare professionals, as, as, as leaders among healthcare professionals, mm -hmm. we're really beginning um, to, to, leverage, uh, to leverage mentoring. Um, one of the, uh, you might have heard the term possibilitarian, uh, which is this whole idea that um, what does a mentor do for you in terms of unlocking the possibilities? Mm -hmm. uh, again, I find that as nurses discover mentoring, um, they discover the power of mentoring um, and that mentoring relationship, uh, a light bulb goes on for them and they really begin to see in a whole new way yeah. um, the possibilities. And those possibilities become so much more clear um, for themselves um, and, and for their work within uh, the organization. So you're really stressing it's not for novices and it's really something that cuts across ages and stages. Yes. And it's uh, it's really uh, something where there can be benefits derived uh, across a nurse's or any clinical team member's uh, career horizon. Absolutely. Yeah. And again, across yeah. your, your career journey, your yeah. goals are going to be small at times. They're going to be larger at times. Yeah. And the beauty of the mentoring relationship is mentors don't judge your goals and their mm -hmm. size. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really all about facilitating your professional journey um, and your movement towards those goals. Yeah. yeah. 
My next question is related to the growing national and international nursing shortage. Uh, we all know it's essential as leaders for us to consider how we'll support nurses, not only as they enter the profession, but throughout their career trajectory. And we're interested in learning, how is your organization planning to leverage nursing mentorship to improve nurse retention? And in your response, please leave your city and country location. I know you've been, your work has been um, appreciated by the American Nurses Credentialing Center, and you, I think you've had some collaboration with the Magnet Recognition Program. Could you talk about where you think some of the intersections are for the, with, with ANCC and your work? Certainly. Uh, when you think about the ANCC Magnet Recognition Program, it's all about facilitating the very best in care for patients through a model of nursing excellence. Mm-hmm. Um, and so MAGNET is really about driving the very best in terms of evidence-based outcomes. And really, that's what my program of mentoring research has been all about. Um, in 2019, as you're certainly well aware, uh, MAGNET created a transformational leadership model component requiring organizations have a mentoring program or plan to address three of five categories of nurses, clinical nurse, nurse manager, nurse leader, advanced practice nurse, um, and nurse executive. And so we've chosen to build our evidence-based mentoring program platform software around those criteria. So that's helpful, uh, and we're clearly working um, with a view of not only what Magnet is challenging us to um, address, but we're also really um, trying to think about mentoring in the broadest sense at Boston Children's, both both nursing and for the expanded uh, care team as well. Um, so just some final words, any final words of wisdom or advice for us as we set out on this journey, because we're... Um, We've been working on mentoring in a more structured, formal way for almost four years now at Boston Children's in terms of our own self-assessment. But what words of wisdom would you have for how we might look ahead? Certainly. The the science of mentoring is young. Um, So what that means is there's gaps, but there's also opportunities. And so as we've moved the needle towards an outcome-based, evidence-based approach for mentoring, uh, while exciting, there's certainly lots and lots of opportunities for further study. There's there's lots we still don't know. Um, so my advice would be to always approach mentoring from an evidence-based perspective. Um, so using uh, as you approach mentoring uh, in terms of your initiatives in your hospitals, in your uh, be they more local or more or more broad approach them from an evidence-based perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, get involved in the evolution of, of the practice of evidence-based mentoring, but also in the evolution of the science uh, of evidence-based mentoring. Um, certainly, it, it takes a village to build this. Um, there certainly is lots more opportunity, uh, but the place to start is, is for us to develop this common language mm-hmm. that's based on science mm-hmm. um, that really drives outcomes through our healthcare environments uh, and does it from a a scientific perspective and then moves the science forward. So learning and translating from prior studies, but additionally embracing the opportunity to continue uh, to do research and to better understand uh, the science of mentorship going forward. Absolutely. Lots of opportunities there. Louise, thank you so much for the conversation and for sharing your work and your perspectives on mentorship. It's really been a pleasure to host you on Open Pediatrics today. My pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. Mentor and be mentored. Thank you.